Hello everybody, welcome into the Rap City studio here in Anthem, Arizona for another one of our rap-spired videos, trying to provide some inspiration for all you musicians out there to keep on going. We've got a special treat today. One of my goals with our videos, and we focused a lot on our instructors and our Rap City personnel, but one of my goals was to also start bringing in some local musicians, some people that in their own world have found some inspiration in music and where music means stuff to them. So with us today, we've got Mr. Rusty Roberts, Rusty, Hi. welcome to the studio. Glad Thank to have you, have you here. Appreciate it. Rusty, um, he is an Arizona native, but he's kind of was bending around and back a little bit. Um, he came to us walking in the store one day, looking for strings and guitars. Kind of a nice interaction. He also uh, ran into Aaliyah, my daughter and our vocal instructor up at the club when she was working and, and talked about that. And I think you said you even came by Rosati's for one of the band concerts yes, and come and saw us. So. Enjoy it very much. Um, so Rusty is a, a self-proclaimed musician. <laughs> and done his own thing. He's even got a CD out, which we've got here, which uh, we're excited uh, to uh, focus on that today. So the purpose of our videos here, Rusty, is again, we're trying to inspire some folks out there. Some of us, instructor-wise, we've got that whole story. Yep, I started in trumpet in fifth grade, and I went through junior high and high school, and da-da-da-da. Um, but there's a lot of folks out there that didn't get started that way. They got started because of some other inspiration or some other insight. So our whole question is, what inspired you to get started doing some music? That's a, that's a great question with, with probably a really long answer, but I'll, I'll be more brief. Uh, actually, in high school, I was a big fan of rock and roll and uh, loved everything about that. And there was a guy in my high school named Tom Booth who played guitar. And um, I saw him play a couple of times, and I thought, man, i got to be able to figure that out because that's pretty cool. So. Uh, so that was kind of what started my journey in terms of uh, inspiration. It was really guitar itself, not necessarily writing music or songs, but, uh, but really guitar. And so that sort of led me on the journey of, you know, trying to figure it all out. I've kind of self-taught. I didn't really take a lot of lessons. Um, learned from friends, sitting around jamming and, you know, seeing different people play things. And, and as we used to probably, you know, I, I update you, but we used to drop the needle uh, to try to listen to guitar parts and try, oh, try to figure those out where you have to keep dropping them. I in. remember that. It's, I remember doing it's, that. It's a little bit easier now with YouTube and whatnot, <laughs> but uh, you certainly have the luxury today. But um, that's really kind of how it all started. And then I, I, I went a little bit deeper and, and started looking into who, who inspired people like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and, and led me sort of a, a lifelong um, journey into discovering blues and different blues artists and that's really kind of where my foundation of guitar playing is um, it, it, that's really what kind of grabbed me people like Eric Clapton and, and people like that is kind of really where I grabbed on to hey I really want to play guitar yeah so, very cool so very that's cool. kind of how that that part of it started very cool so yeah the, one of the things we talk about is maybe the who that inspiration to the who inspired us as we go Clapton such a great one to put out there. There's many conversations about who the greatest guitar players in the world are. I, it's hard not There's to no include. correct answer. There is no, but it's hard to not include him in that argument. I mean, mm. just, um, I like, the, I'm kind of a Carlos Santana guy, yeah. but I got turned on to Tommy Emmanuel. Did mm -hmm. you ever tell oh, yeah. And then Roy Clark. Oh, <laughs> I mean, Roy Clark. I mean, you start hearing these people. Jerry like, Reed. Yeah, and you're just like, wow, these guys. And some of them crafted a, a different vibe. Yep. I mean, what most people know Roy Clark for. He -haw, country, right? Country and he -haw. He -haw. Right. But yep. boy, you see him play, you realize, wow, this guy's a master yeah. guitar player. Yeah. So those influences so, are huge. Um, so who else? Who else? Name some other guitar players um, you really So my to. favorite, I guess, all time would be uh, would be Stevie Ray Vaughan uh, and when he came out. And then that set me on the journey of uh, Albert King and B.B. King and Albert Collins. And yeah. I also play harp, uh, oh, blues nice. harp. And so... That set me on Little Walter and James Cotton and Muddy Waters and all those guys from a blues perspective. Yeah, so, very cool. So that that kind of uh, that kind of got me going enough where I could where I was uh, somewhat um, uh, literate, I, I guess, musically be, to be able to play and jam with guys and. Uh, Ended up being in a, a couple of bands over the years, and yeah. we were you know, we were cover band, uh, party band, play rock and roll kind of stuff. Um, one band for probably 14 years or so in Denver, and then another one for about six or seven years, kind of doing similar things. Yeah. Uh, and then one of the one of the bands kind of morphed into more playing originals, where the singer uh, wrote all the songs, and that was a very intriguing thing to me. And he he was a, a really good songwriter. His name is Todd Musselman, and. Uh, he writes some great songs, and so that kind of got me thinking, and, and 
fast forward, we have kids and sort of put the music thing on hold for a while. And then as I got back into it, um, really wanted to do the path of, of sort of my own thing. I, I felt like I had something to say musically. I wanted yeah. to tell some stories. Um, so I guess along that time, the influence has changed a little bit from strictly rock and roll and guitar and blues to songwriters like John Hyatt and yeah. um, Robert Earl Keen and you know, some guys who really can, and Bruce Springsteen, guys who can really tell stories with the words. And that was really what was intriguing to me. And so that kind of set me on a journey. Um, through all that, we, uh, we ended up um, sort of meeting some guys in, in a band called the Band of Heathens, and they're based out of Austin, Texas. Okay. And uh, some great songwriters there, got to know them. Long story short, I did a um, songwriter retreat for four years with those guys, where oh, we would go okay. to Lake Austin and hide away in a house, and there'd be 10 of us maximum. And we just talked about the craft, and we wrote songs, and we recrafted them, and we pinged ideas, and we really tried to learn about the process. Right. You know, it's interesting because you, you kind of prefaced a little bit in our earlier conversation and today with they hadn't taken lessons, like so to speak. But the reality is, you actually have. It's just the model of lessons was different. Right. I mean, it was because you're still listening, you're still interacting, you're still absorbing, you're still going to four years of of songwriting retreats, yeah. so you have a chance to, to look at some people that have done this and acquire things they've done. Absolutely. Learning isn't always one line, direct line of how we get to it. So I think that's actually a cool part I, I of the guess, story. I guess I learned theory backhandedly and by failure, you know, <laughs> when, when you know it doesn't sound right. Yeah. So <laughs> I would, I would, if I had to do it all over again, I would have had a more structured scenario and I probably would have pursued that a little bit further. Yeah, I, 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 I learned theory in college and still at times learned by failure. Right. Yeah, my, well, my, my instructor was very quick to tell me what I, what I presented was not what I was supposed to present. Well, most people in the room know when you <laughs> yeah. go do it right. So, <laughs> That's yeah. funny. That's funny. So Arizona native originally. You said you spent some time in Colorado. Yep. Where was that? Talk about the journey a little bit. And so uh, even before that, my dad was in the Air Force. We ended up, he ended up retiring at Williams Air Force Base in Chandler okay. years and years ago. That's how we kind of got here. Went to Colorado with a job change, and um, you know we hunkered down. We had kids there and raised them, and, and uh, um, that's where a lot of my musical stuff kind of happened. Yeah. Um, and my band members, where I recorded this, was with a couple of bandmates. He has a studio yeah. in his basement, Spencer Pine, and um, pretty much a Den Denver area. Denver area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, there's he's a pretty good music team. scene up there. We're in Parker, it really yeah, is. it really is. And you know, with, with I. With, Bands coming through town with uh, I-25 north and south and I-70 east and west, you, you get everybody coming through, all sorts of different influences yeah. that you can see. And then there's obviously Red Rocks, uh, which is the best music venue in the world, but uh, to, to, be able to, to be able to see... Spoken by people that have been in Denver for uh, yeah. in Colorado for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's funny. And it's always a nice experience because of the eclectic nature of the music that the rules. Yeah. Through. Washington has an amphitheater complex right. kind of in eastern Washington. Um, the Gorge. The Gorge, yeah, yeah. the Gorge. Yeah. Um, I would say it doesn't... Doesn't equate to Red Rocks, but it's kind of the same kind of vibe where you yeah. really have that yeah. experience, and it has been a very eclectic venue for yeah. a, for a ton of bands. Yeah. So, so you got the songwriting, and you decided to take it one step further and actually get some songs out and make a CD. And this is I a, a, this is a great CD, Rusty. Thank you. I mean, the design, the creation, the music, all pieces of this—they're phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very where, much. How'd you how'd you take that next step? Well, I, it was one of those where I said, "Hey, I'm uh, I'm not I'm a little long in the tooth. I'm not getting any younger." And uh, I'd like to be able to, to memorialize this and have it actually have something to show for this. And so I have, I have more music than this, but I, I kind of honed it down to what I thought would be the most interesting songs. And, and um, so I worked them up. Um, we did sort of the, the bass tracks, uh, drummer, bass player, and me, an acoustic guitar and vocal track. And then we ended up layering some other stuff in. Uh, I play slide guitar as well. Oh, and, okay, and nice. electric. And so. You know, I can't play them all at the same time, so you kind of have to layer that stuff in. <laughs> uh, plus, we were blessed enough, uh, I was blessed enough and lucky enough to have these guys in this band, the Band of Heathens that I referenced yeah. earlier, played on it as well for about half the song. So, yeah. uh, B3 organ, they layered on top of it and some other stuff. So, I really, um, when, I, when I started with it, you know, the, the root of it was from what I learned at Song Farmer, which was the, the, uh, the songwriting retreat, retreat. Yeah, yeah. songwriter.com. Uh, that was the foundation of it, and then you know everything else. Once you get in the studio with the producer, thing, things take a different shape, and the songs sound different than what you thought they were going to in a better way usually. So anyway, so I really at the end of the day, I wanted something to have. 
Yeah. And although I have a CD, not a lot of people have CD players anymore, obviously. <laughs> Uh, it's on it's on streaming as well, but um, uh, I wanted to have some. I'm, a, I'm an older guy, obviously, and I, I loved album artwork when I was younger. I'd love to be able to see who played on what song and who produced it and all those sorts of cool things and yeah. all, all the pictures and everything. So I wanted something I could hold. So That's one of those things that has kind of pushed into a different media. I mean, I'm the same as you. I've got, I've got a couple big, deep things of, of old record albums and vinyl. Got my whole, I got five cases of CDs. And cassette tapes. I mean, yeah. I'm the same way. I'm trying to figure out who's there, and I love, like you said, the artwork is such yeah. an important thing. Um, so the name of the CD you wrote is Road. Yep. Yep. And um, you said it's streaming. So what service is it streaming on? Uh, Apple Music, uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube, basically all of them. Okay. Um, which is when you when you go into that process, the service that you use, they kind of throw it out to everybody. So. Let's be clear. Anytime we get a musician who's got stuff out there that's published, we would love to get out there and support them. So find Rusty. Roberts. Roberts. I was gonna say Rusty Road. Find Rusty Roberts and look up Road and 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 do it. Then you can get that twelve cent check coming in from the streamers. That, yeah, twelve cents would be if they streamed it like a hundred times. But yeah. I uh, we have a, 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 a trumpet instructor who comes in. He also does composition. We joke about it. I think he received like a four cent check one time yeah, or something like yeah. that. It's kind of funny. So yeah, you get, you get one twentieth of a penny per yeah. stream. Yeah. So let's stream it a lot. Come on, people. Um, so. That's a lot of music history. You've actually been pretty attentive to the concept. Again, I'm going to come back to it. I think you've studied as much music or more than a lot of people. You've just studied in a different way. Perhaps. But what, what did you do professionally? Uh, well, essentially, I'm a banker. Yeah. Um, and I've been sort of in that industry, um, bank finance, kind of alternative finance for 30 years or so. Yeah. So. We've, we've been talking on videos. It, it's very interesting to me sometimes to realize the balance between Jobs that are sometimes either either more mechanical or numbers or this, and yet some real creative energy coming out of that. So I mean that's a really cool thing because again people sometimes think I'm not a musician. I'm not in music. I don't have. I can't do that. Right. That's not the truth. Yeah. 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 You just got to have a little bit of inspiration. It's in here. Yeah. If, if, if you feel like there's something in there, you got to pursue it. Yeah. Very cool. You mentioned a ton of artists. You said uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan was was maybe kind of one of those as pinnacle a, points for you, right? As a, as a guitar player. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, absolutely. I was. I, I remember at the time listening to him, and there were some really just phenomenal things coming out of him musically. It was fun. Yeah. You ever heard Carvin Jones? Oh yeah. Yeah, I know he, he swings the anthem quite a bit. He's kind of yeah. an anthem local. He reminds me a little bit. Kind of came out of that. So when I was scene. when I was in college at NAU, and after that, um, used to come down here, and I'm friends with as well, not name dropping, but uh, Chuck Hall, who also plays down here all the time. Yeah, he's sort of a, a Arizona legend from a blues guitar perspective. Great guy too. So. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Well, we're going to take a segue here. We're not done with the video, but I think we get a chance to hear a tune off your CD, yeah? yeah so we're going to get the studio shifted out and hang around. We're going to see a little Rusty Roberts playing some guitar and singing. I finally pulled out of town Already lost track of time Lord George is on the radio singing A full tank lets me open my mind I clear my head as I watch the lines Create my moving picture One mile at a time The hot sun mounds the wind and rain It's good to be on the road again The only thing better is coming home to you I say la 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 coming home to you I wonder if the place on the side of the road is a house or a home I wonder if they knew what came sun mounds the wind and rain it's good to be on the road again the only thing that's better is coming home to you and i say la la 
la la la la la coming home to you making my moving picture tonight in front of the dashboard lights a V8 driving me home tonight in the pain Sun, mountain, the wind and rain. It's good to be on the road again. The only thing that's better is coming home to you. I said, La, 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 la. Coming home to you. And I said, Hey everybody, we sure appreciate you joining us today. Rusty, I want to thank you so much for being with thank us you. today. Appreciate it. Hey, let's remember this is about an inspirational journey and about music. So don't feel like you're going to lose time. Don't feel like you're going to get to that point where you can't follow the dream you might have. Rusty's a great example of that. That was a beautiful song. That was Road itself, right? That was the title track? Uh, it's uh, That's called Driving Song. Driving Song, yeah, right, yeah. That was the inspiration behind it. That's a great, uh, what a great song, what a great style. And again, I want to thank Rusty so much for being with us today. Off screen, his wife Kathy's hanging out with us too over there. And remember, tune in and watch these videos like, but most importantly, let's make sure we work together and keep this journey of music going forward inspirationally. You guys have a great weekend and a blessed day. We love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.